Right now, though, let's recap the bike we did have. The 2014 model year brought an update to the Super Tenere that added cruise control as standard, updated lights with LED and projector headlights, and, on the S model, a suspension that was adjustable at the touch of a button. Our test bike was the S model, which initially gave us some issues. Many of the aftermarket side racks at the time didn't fit the new bike. There was a new rear side cover and the motors for the electronic adjustment were under it. We ended up going with racks from Metal Mule to move things forward. They were very expensive, but exceptionally well made and allowed us to test multiple sets of soft and hard bags. With any adventure bike one of the main criteria for its usefulness is the ability to carry cargo like bags, camping gear and more. The original Super Tenere was well suited to the task but the addition of push-button controls with a multitude of presets improved the performance all the way around. Sure you can stop and turn some dials on your manual control shocks, but with these systems the ability to hit new terrain and adjust on the fly allows you to just keep going and going and going. Need a softer ride dial it up, stiffen it up for hard riding, whatever you need on the fly. The other area an adventure bike needs is a powerful motor. There's an old explanation of the difference between horsepower and torque that I really like, horsepower is how fast you hit the wall, torque is how far you take the wall with you. The Tenere has the second lowest stock horsepower of any large displacement adventure bike. But it makes power where you want it. It has a good mid-range that allows you to cruise at speed, run back roads with ease, and haul all the gear you want. You can do all this while still getting 40 plus miles per gallon. During our time with the Super Tenere we modified it for more power with a custom flash deku, new head pipe from Arrow, and a Yoshimura tailpipe. You can read that article here. In a nutshell we went from a stock 85 horsepower at the rear wheel to 103 horsepower the extra power was nice but honestly the bike didn't need it. The EQ Flash, from Econleashed was great to make it run better and deliver a smoother throttle with less engine braking and was the best part of the upgrades.